Want to learn mindset tips for creatives? Then this is a show for you. I'm author Tanya Duncan Ellis, and this is another episode of Write This, my author interview show. And today I'm pleased to welcome Kirsten Call, a therapist, life coach, and children's author, to talk about mindset tips and coaching for creatives that help with the mental challenges that creatives face in the author's life. Kirsten has joined us here, so I'm going to invite her on and get her in. I'm podcast which is called coaching for creatives and gives all kinds of great tips that have been very helpful to me hi hey, how you doing oh yes i'm so happy to have you here you. on the show Thank you so much yes. i've been enjoying your uh, podcast as i shared with you before i invited you on or after i invited you on i was stuck in an airport so i binge listened to all the episodes <laughs> of the show yeah. That's so exciting. That made me so happy to hear. It's very helpful. <laughs> and even for me as a mom, a lot of things that you shared, I'm a mom of young adults and a teen, and it's really helpful for me when talking about a lot of the challenges that they face as well. So it's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Now, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and, and just give us a little background of information about you? I'd love to. So so I actually go by Kirsty Call as an author and Kirsten Call as a, as a life coach, just to kind of differentiate. So I write picture books and board books. Um, I'll show you a couple of them, Mutilda's Bad Mood. So I'm a therapist. I've been a therapist for 25 years and I've been a life coach for a couple of years. And so I write bibliotherapeutic books where like Mutilda's Bad Mood, you know, it definitely has an SEL, social emotional learning component, right? Um, I have Cold Turkey, which actually all of my books have themes in them about, you know, emotions and how to process emotions and, and things that you can do, like the big screen. This is my first board book and it came out this summer. And it was the very first picture book I ever wrote like 10 years ago. It was called Wilma in the Big Scream. And I have this, I have five kids. I live in the Boston area. And one of my daughters used to scream all the time. And so I was like, I'm gonna use narrative therapy, which is when you tell a story, you help you tell a story and you help the person change the story of their life by telling a story. So I would tell her these stories of Wilma and the Big Scream. And then Wilma would stop screaming. Somehow there would be ways that Wilma would stop screaming. And so that was the first, very first picture book I ever wrote. And then just barely, this came out after dozens of iterations, right? It's now a board book. It's written in rhyme, which it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And there are things to do in here. Like if you read this to your toddler, um, they'll know to breathe in, breathe out, to count, like things you can do to make, make your, make your little person help your little person feel better so and then um cow says meow which is all you know all about that joke of the animals saying the wrong sounds but also knowing that it's okay to meow if you're a cow it's okay to be different it's important to be different mm -hmm. so um those are a few of my books that are already out and i have uh one coming out next summer called smarty ants so that out. And so helpful. And I was thinking as you were showing even the big screen, one of my kids was a screamer and I would have loved to have had that book. But I really just connected the social emotional learning component because my child that did that had anxiety and was kind of anxious child. And that probably explains the screaming that like a light bulb just went off during the time when you were showing your book cover. But yeah, so sad. But great ways to approach the social emotional issues with your kids. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so I, um, so to talk more about the coaching, <laughs> I, I was doing a podcast with Kim Chafee called Picture Book Look. Actually, we're still doing it. It's just not weekly anymore. And we were interviewing authors and illustrators and their editors and the book design is phenomenal. And we decided to kind of slow down on that. So in January, I started the um, coaching 
for creatives podcast. And as you said, well, I'll tell you, you know, each podcast episode is between seven and 10 minutes. It's very short. Like you can, you know, be folding your laundry or driving somewhere and listen to the full episode. And I've got episodes on perfectionism, comparing, overwhelm, difficult conversations, things that apply to your normal life and also your creative life. Right. How to get unstuck. Oh man, that was okay. Good. It he froze for a second. I forgot. I love all the topics because they speak to all the things I'm going through as a creative. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> we struggle with all of these things as creators. We struggle with trying to get every single. Uh oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. We struggle with trying to get every. Can you see me? <laughs> Uh-oh. I can see in here. I was for a second, but now I see. Oh, here. I don't know what's happening. Usually this works really well right here. I can see in here. I can see in here. All right. Well, I can see uh, I wonder if I can you can see and hear me? Okay. So, you know, as creatives, we are, we struggle with, you know, feeling like, like things have to be perfect. And it is true. You want to choose every word super carefully, especially picture books and board books, right? Because it's like poetry. Every word matters. But at the same time, with good enough, we'll never get the project done, you know? Now, another thing. I love that you talk about on a few of your episodes is failing ahead of time. Can you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> Can you to me? Yeah. Oh, I love, I love this topic because we all do it, right? We, and I'll, so for example, when we, I, I um, wanted to try out for a professional choir with my husband and I remember we were both like, ah, oh, we're not good enough. We probably should just not even try out because we're never going to, right? And I remember saying to my husband, what is the happen? If we up? Well, the worst is that we won't make it. And then we'll be exactly where we are right now. And so we decided to try out. And our, the, um, the guy we were, the conductor who we were, people, either both of us or neither of us. <laughs> And we, sorry, I'm just moving around because I can't tell if. <laughs> but where you were before? I don't know what's up with the connection. Day. Yeah. Um, anyway, so. Everyone's getting a view of my house because I'm trying different spots. Um, <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So okay. when we when we make a choice to not do something because it might not happen, then that's failing ahead of time. Like when you decide, I'm not going to submit this manuscript. Because what if someone doesn't accept it? What if they don't like it? Then you're failing ahead of time when, and you're just in exactly the same place. Like if I had not tried out for that choir, I would be in exactly the same place as I was in the beginning. Um, and I did try out and we did make it actually, which was phenomenal and wonderful. And I would have missed out on a really wonderful experience, right? right. So um, I'm gonna see if I can see you better. See, I could see you where you were in the beginning, and then you're moving around. It's better if you kind of stay still, I think, than when you're moving like this. Okay. I'll but, go back to the spot. But can Sorry, you, everyone. Can you see me? Oh, not nice. There's a good lighting in where you are. That looks cool. Yes, I good. Well, all right. What else? It kind of gets blurred. 
But it's better when you're still. Yes. Okay, I see you. And you can see me? I can see you. You're just breaking up. It's strange. But I'll okay. hopefully be able to hear you. Okay, yes. Yes. But another good thing that you talk, or all these topics are so applicable, the comparison, when you talked about that, and you also talked about something about setting goals that I just loved about uh, being patient through time and setting goals. All these things just got me like, yes, yes, and just got me so pumped up. <laughs> Even oh, because I'm so excited about that. Yeah like talking about waiting and all the different things that we have to do as creative. So it, you hit all the points of all the different things that people who are in this business have to deal with. So that's what I love so much. But what about comparison? Yeah. Can you talk a little comparison. about dealing with comparison? Yeah. Well, I think, I think it is so normal as a human being to want to compare. We're just wired to compare ourselves to other people, right? Or even to, um, and we usually compare our weaknesses to other people's strengths, right? But especially when, like in this creative, in this creative world, we're going to be like, well, I, that person has five books. I only have one, or I don't even have any books. And this person has an agent, or I don't have an agent yet. So the thing about comparison so insidious and doesn't help us and makes no sense is that we can't really, we, it's like comparing apples to oranges. We all have our own talents. We all have our own abilities and it makes, and so to compare our weaknesses with someone else's strengths is, doesn't make sense, but our brains want to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is, now, what can we do if we struggle with that, if we find that we keep comparing ourselves? What are some things that we can do to help ourselves overcome these feelings? I think one, one really important thing that you can do when, you're, when you find yourself, first of all, you have to notice that you're comparing. Like, notice it and then stop that thought. Just delete it. And then try to remember what you're good at. Like even maybe write a list of all the things that you know you're good at so that you can remind yourself that you are good at things and they're gonna be different than what someone else is good at. And that's okay, that's exactly the way it's supposed to be. To know that you are unique, you're the only person who can tell your story in the way that you can. You're the only person in, on this planet who thinks like you do and who creates like you do. And I think that's a beautiful thing to remember, especially when you're comparing, to be like, oh, wait a minute. I'm the only me. <laughs> I'm the only me here. I'm the only person who can do what I do in the way that I do it. Right. right. That's cool. Now, what about some other things that you've noticed that creatives struggle with? What are some other issues you might see? As, as a creator? Right. Uh, I think lots of times we struggle with feeling stuck. Like, I don't know what to do next. How do I, like, how do I get to that next level in terms of revision? Or how do I, uh, how do I get a book sold? How do I get that agent? Or what, you know, and I think especially with the pandemic, we've had a lot of people feel like their creativity is just gone because there's so much stress and so many things other things going on that we're not used to. So um, I actually have this six week, get yourself unstuck program where we talk about all of these things. And if you listen to the podcast, which you did, the first yeah. like seven uh, episodes are all about getting yourself unstuck. Like in the first one is, you know, changing your narrative, changing the way that you think about your projects. If you're thinking to yourself, I don't know how to do this. I'm a failure. I'm never going to get this right. Then it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy and you were not going to get it right and you won't succeed, right? But if you think about how success lives in a neighborhood of failure and you allow yourself to fail and fail over and over again, just like a toddler, you know how toddlers will, when they're learning to walk, they don't give up the first time they fall. <laughs> They get up again and they keep walking and they try over and over again. It's pretty amazing when you watch that process. 
And every toddler does it. But it's funny as writers, because lots of times we'll be like, well, that person said no, I guess, <laughs> I guess I'm not a good writer. <laughs> and that is absolutely not true. So if and we I change those thoughts when my and replace them with thoughts. Okay. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I know what we you have just say? When you talked about the toddler, I was thinking when my daughter learned to ride her bike, she kept falling. She kept trying. And that's an example I used with her when she's struggling with something too, yeah. Right. I mean, and we can do that as adults. Um, and then if we choose to think instead of like, I'm a failure, I can't do this, I don't know how to do this. Instead of thinking that, if we are willing to think something like, I, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be in my writing journey. I know exactly, you know, I am doing exactly, you know, if you can wrap your brain or wrap your heart around that, then you're more likely to be able to do what you want to do. Right. These are great, yes. Because it is where I think I've been absorbing your your messages and I've been counseling my kids on different things. I'm serious. One of my kids. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And then you apply to the cocoon of butterfly. Even if you are where you are, you're where you need to be at that point and you keep working at it to move on forward. So yeah, I love all the messaging. You guys have to listen to her podcast. I'm telling you. See, I didn't know your other, I need to listen to the other one you're on as well. Because I met her at I was on the highlights and she was and then I just looked up her information. And I also heard you talking about your new podcast and what you're doing. But this is just very funny. It's really eye opening for me. So it's great. Yeah. So, what are some other things we talk about? Um, comparison. We talk about time is with what you were saying as well. What about overwhelm? Well, you I think said about that on your podcast, like dealing with overwhelm when you're feeling like there's so much coming at you getting things organized, projects and things like that. So that really was helpful as well. Yeah, it was, it was um, I wanted to say it, it was so fun to meet you at Highlights. Anyone who is listening, who is a Cloud Highlights, <laughs> it's such an incredible retreat, such a beautiful place to go and create and it's magical. I love that, I've been there twice. It feels like just being removed from my family through having that time, just the time and space to just relax, I guess. Somehow it does seem like a, I was telling them I get Disney and for others, where it's kind of like that happy place for you. Right. To create. Disney. Right. Now, Agreed. into writing for children, I know you have your mother of five, so... How, what led you to write for children? So I've always loved to write and to read. And it was, I actually talk about this in my podcast on overwhelm because I was feeling, I had just moved to Boston from Lancaster, had so much to do. And I had school, I had an eight year old, a six year old, a four, six month old. And there was just a lot going on, just moving in and helping everyone get acclimated. And then I thought to myself, I need to add something. I'm going to start writing. I need to write. I need to do something for myself. And so um, that is one thing you can do with overwhelm. You can either add something or take something away, right? And so I decided to start writing picture books. And like I said, the first one was Woman and the Big Scream, which this used to be. And I joined a critique group in my town. There happened to be this wonderful critique group, um, Writer's Rumpus. Maybe you guys have heard of um, Writer's Rumpets. It's got a great uh, pod, uh, sorry, a great blog. And I joined the critique group and that was in 2012. So 11 years ago. That's amazing. And even with the big screen and how it came 
is she showing the patience and how things come, you know, wait for different things? Because that's a big that's a big thing, waiting for things. And the one thing I want to add to that is that the big scream, I had an offer from a small press with the big scream and I just didn't feel good about taking it. And so I am so grateful that I waited because it came out with Simon & Schuster this Ooh. summer. It was such a great, and it was, it's important to wait, to be willing to wait for the right moment and to pay attention to your gut feelings. If you don't feel good about something, even though it, it felt like, oh my goodness, it'll be my second book. My first book, um, The Raindrop Who Couldn't Fall, came out in 2013. It's back there. But um, so it would have been my second book, but then it wouldn't have been with Simon & Schuster. So I'm really grateful that I waited. That is incredible. That's wonderful. And that's your one that came out in 2022, the big screen. Yeah, that was the most recent. Um, these two are 2021. And then um, this was 2020. And that, that reminds me, on your show, you talked about um, setting goals. Like you were saying, I want a new book a year. Or can you talk about that? That was something I'm like, yes, I've got to implement. Being intentional. You're talking about being intentional about what we want to do. Yeah, so thinking about, you know, thinking about what do you want in 10 years? I... I write down the 10 things that I want in 10 years every day in my journal. And one of them is I sell a book, uh, I sell at least one book every year. And uh, <laughs> I, it's, there's a lot about the big screen today, but like one year it was, I think it was 2019. I had been saying this every day. I've been writing. I, I actually like memorize it and say it to myself. And then you can even go farther and look in the mirror and say it to yourself. I am a New York Times bestseller, your wildest dreams, whatever it is. I sell books every year. You can say this to yourself in the mirror, which feels very awkward and strange in the moment. But um, I was saying to myself every day, I sell a book every year and I had sold two the year before. So I was like, well, I guess if I don't sell a book this year, I can count last year. And it was December like, 22nd. I was like, well, I guess Probably not gonna happen this year. And then I got the offer for the big screen. So you just never know, right? And you can manifest things by thinking about them in, in a way, in a positive way and saying them to yourself and writing them down and, and knowing what you want. I think if you're intentional and you think about what you want and you figure out ways to get there, you will get there. Right. That's right. Oh, Oh, go ahead. Oh, nothing. It's like we have a lag. No, let me be quiet. Yes. <laughs> I was just going to say, I had a seven year dry spell. I had this first book. I'll just show you. I had this first book, The Raindrop Who Couldn't Fall, um, came out. And then it took me six years after that to, to get an agent. It took that long. And so I had this really long dry spell and I had to keep, and I, so I made goals of, um, I'm gonna try and get 100 rejections. If I can get 100 rejections, that'll get me to success, you know? And I definitely got more than 100 rejections. And then after seven years, um, Mutilda's Bad Mood came out. So I did get an agent, I did get the book deals, but I, I had so many years of rejection and I just, I'm so grateful that I kept, we have to have persistence in, in, in this industry, right? We have to have grit. We have to keep, we have to be okay with waiting. We have to be patient. And if we do those things, eventually we'll, we'll, we'll get the book deals. We'll get the success that we want. Well, how did you keep your spirits up in all that time? What did you do to keep yourself motivated to keep going? Well, one thing one thing that I love to do is to celebrate, celebrate the, the successes, the small successes. So it was a success if an editor wrote back at all. <laughs> that, I counted that as a success. Or, um, you know, even writing. If I wrote for a, for a period of time, like if I wrote a rough draft, even a crappy, terrible, horrible rough draft, if I wrote that rough draft, then I would celebrate that. That was a success, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, 
just finding the small little things, even the tiny things to celebrate and making them reasons to celebrate. Yes, well, that's a good, yeah, very good advice. And I'm happy you mentioned the writing in the journal because I had said, oh, I want to do that, and I have done it. So I was listening to so many things. I forgot about that. Yeah, because I have a journal, and when you're saying writing those goals you want, you want every day to help try to manifest mm -hmm. that and keep yourself on, on the path of it. So I want to be doing that. Yeah. yeah. And we're allowed, and we have the choice. We get to choose what we dream for. Our dreams, all everything we can dream of, is possible. Yeah, anything is possible. We get to we get to choose, and I love that. I love that we have we can choose how to think about our goals, and we can choose what our goals are, and we can choose um, how to approach them in a way that makes us feel, you know, light and love and creativity. Now, can you? Can you tell us again, what projects are you working on now? What kind of, uh, what's your writing project? What do you, what can we see from you or that you hope for us to see soon? Well, I have a YA that I'm really excited about that we're going to put on submission soon about my great, great grandmother who lied on the census records and said she was white. Oh. And, um, it's written in free verse and her, her mother who was enslaved and then the other, it's two, two points of view. She was born in Ohio um, as a free black woman, and she actually changed her name and her race on the census record. And she married a guy from the North who was a spy. He, was, he would come down to the South during the Civil War. He would come down to the South, work on the barracks, work on the, on the roof, and then he would bring the intel back to the North. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. So... That's an exciting one. And then I'm working on some board book series, one about seasons. I've got um, a fairy tale uh, series called, um, board book series called, uh, you know, the three little pigs shape up, coloring little reds, uh, counting on Snow White. And yeah. it's at acquisition somewhere right now. So hopefully yeah. that one will be coming soon. Yeah. Sounds nice. Yeah. yeah. And teaching those concepts and it's great and then now in the beginning you mentioned your program for creatives what is that again the program that they can take part in Are okay you... it's called it's a six-week program and you meet with me individually for half an hour every week and we there it's called get yourself unstuck so if you go to kirstencall.com k-i-r-s-t-i-n-e-c-a-l-c-a-l-l dot com you can um you can work with me i will do i i meet with people for a free 15 minute consultation so you can see if it's something that you want and yeah it's really fun there's a a topic every week and i do give homework <laughs> but it's tailored to you it's, it's 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 we do what you need to have done so yeah now as we uh, wrap up can you party for creative Dealing with mindset or some advice they need to touch your creative journey. Oh, that's a good. I think what I would like to say is that we are made to create. And I truly believe that each person who is called to create is meant to create. And and that our the things that we create can change the lives of children. If we are doing kid lit, we're going to change. We're going to be able to really help and change. Even, even if we, if what we write resonates with only one person, it's worth it. Your work is worth it. And don't ever give up. Great. Well, thank you so much, Kishi, for joining us. Thank you for all of you who have in. And you can uh, read her where again tell them where they can reach you. You can reach me at, at Kiersey Call on Instagram or Twitter. And also um, my KiersteeCall.com or KirstenCall.com. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking this time and sharing all this wonderful knowledge and giving us this
Thank you. Yes. Thank you guys for tuning in this week for another episode of Right. Bye-bye.